Hello, and welcome back to Black Dog Vintage and Antiques. Jesus, you know the name of my own channel, shouldn't I? I am Nikki. Nix is on the floor, coming in and out of the studio right now, so you might hear some snuffling and snorting. That's just my little baby beast of a dog. You get me today a little more relaxed and chilled. I got the jacked up nails and everything. I got some errands I got to run. I got some cleaning I got to do. My sister and my niece are coming up. So I have other things I have to do today and I needed to squeeze in this quick haul before the week got away from me. So earlier you've seen, I think it was three, I think it was three videos of Calcoon, Jeffersonville of Peter's Barn. And yes, I made it back alive as you can see. And the really enormous yard sale that we went to. Now I didn't really make out all that great that day I only picked up a handful of pieces some better than others I'm gonna be honest um, so it is what it is but I still said I would show you what I picked up so here we go so I'm gonna show you first some jewelry I picked up two two brooches from a really nice place in Calcoon called Ragtime um, clothing she had a vast array of clothes vinyl some hard goods and quite a bit of jewelry. So I only picked up two pieces because, eh, you know, she did have good price. She did have good prices, not necessarily for reselling, but I did manage to pull two pieces out that definitely were in the reseller's market. And the first piece is this. This is a flower enamel brooch with the golden brown kind of toasted marshmallow-y look inside with the beautiful swirled and feathered finish on it. And so it makes it look even more flower-like that feathers out into the black lining around the tip of each flower and the yellow center. It does have a C clasp and it is signed right here. I don't know if it's Robert or Robert, but I think because it's kind of fancy, we're going to call it Robert. It is about a whole ear so about three inches or so and it's a nice size piece it even has the even the stem is painted yellow so I thought for fall this was a beautiful piece the other piece I picked up is a Monet now this is a tape tape this is a white enameled with the shabby chic fading on the flower pin itself it is a C clasp and it is signed here in the back, Monet. And once again, it's about the same size, it's about seven, three inches, seven inches. I'd have really big ears if they were seven inches. So those were the two pieces that I picked up at Ragtime. Then that thrift store y'all saw without the thrift store prices, because I don't know, I guess that's what happens when you're in a really big touristy area. You just decide, Oh, I'm not gonna, I'm gonna price all my stuff higher and maybe people will think, oh, that's really a good deal. It's not. It wasn't. I did pick up this crocheted trivet in the circular piece. It is acrylic yarn. It does have the 70s fall colors as it's made. This is a very pale yellow. The color, the camera's picking it up pretty nicely. The bright jack-o'-lantern orange and this russety brown down here. And I just thought for fall with a pumpkin or a teapot sitting on top of it. And there is such a thing as tea season. I can't drink tea in the summer. I can drink peppermint tea. Oh, and FYI, for those of you who don't know, if you have allergies or you have any kind of nasal or, or sinus issues, peppermint tea gets rid of it like that. Works like a charm. So that's it that I picked up in Calcoon that was worth showing you. I did get a couple of other smaller pieces, but no. That is what it is. Now, I do have two now weekly yard sale ladies that set up, and they're within a quarter of a mile to a mile of each other, and I have to drive by one to get to the other. Well, my one lady has caught on and has decided that Yard sale prices aren't good enough. We're going to eBay price stuff. So she's making it harder to pick things, but I turned down a Hull, H-U-H-A-L-L? -L? Oh crap, now I can't remember. 
uh, teapot that was beautiful. It was an Aladdin teapot. She wanted $30 for it. That'd be eBay prices. So her kids must have come over and went, Ma, you're pricing your stuff too low. However, I did manage to pull a few things. I love getting linens from her. And I did get two linens. And I love selling these small linen pieces because A, they sell, and B, they're so easy to ship. So I picked up, that was Nick's bump in the bottom there. I picked up this hand crocheted doily piece with the yellow and blue flowers on the trim. It is a very good size. Now I'm using my whole head. It's a very good size piece. And I picked this up at a very, very reasonable price. The other piece I picked up from her is another dresser scarf. This one is a smaller one though, for like maybe a high boy. And it has, again, so you can see the pattern a little bit more. It does have the crocheted flowers inside of maybe what could be considered a larger flower. It is in an ecru jute cotton blend. And it is really lovely. It is about two feet by 11 inches and will look very pretty on a sideboard or uh, end table uh, in your space. What else do I get from my yard sale lady? Oh, yeah, I got a couple other pieces from my yard sale lady. Same, same lady, older woman, very lovely, opens her garage every weekend to try and sell stuff. And I picked up, it's the first toy I bought. I picked up the surprise box and it works. Ready? Were you surprised? I was. They all, I was actually surprised that it all works. And that there's a little red-headed girl and a little red-headed boy. Aww. So that was kind of an interesting little find. Now from my other lady, who I love her, I wish I could remember her name, and even if I could, I wouldn't be able to pronounce it, I swear. She's from the city, goes down and gets her stuff in the city and brings it up here and sells it. And I got a few pieces. And I got a few pieces, like I said. I got, now these aren't really vintage, but they were just too cute to leave. A Mr. and Mrs. Winter Owl mug. They were just too cute. So there she is, and there he is. And I just thought they were adorable for hot cocoa in the winter time. Put those carefully down there. I also picked up a little praying boy. Ooh, let's put him back here. He is so white in the face that the light around my ring lights washing him out. And his sister praying. So they're two tiny blue and white ceramic figures. They are made in Japan. It's just the tiniest of remnant of sticker right there. Now, from the research I did on these. They came up as two different things. There's the boy is the same in everyone, but the girl has different pigtails or um, hair de um, hair design. Yeah, right. Hairstyle, depending on what you see her in. But from what I found out about them, it looks like they were part of a nativity set. Um, and then obviously I don't have the rest of the pieces, but they're cute, just kind of on their own. I thought. The other piece I picked up from my yard sale lady is this really cute. And I don't really do cute all the time, but I just thought that he was really cute. Paint by num it's paint by paws. That's the name of the piece. He turned it around and he's still working on his little masterpiece there. This is a Fitz and Floyd. You got my sticker on the bottom down there. A Fitz and Floyd paint by paws from the Charming Tales collection. And I just thought he was too cute to leave. So I didn't. So that's what I got from my, so that's what I got from my yard sailors. So that's what I got from my yard sailors and my trip to Calcoon. Like I said, not a lot. The other two pieces I picked up from Calcoon were a movie poster, um, through the looking glass with Johnny Depp. It was the Johnny Depp picture and a piece of sheet music from 1920, which was really, really pretty and a ivory snow ad. Like I said, not, not much. I mean, it was cool to look around. There was lots of really nice stuff to see. But I think we spent maybe an hour, an hour and a half tops going through three stores because we just realized there's nothing here for us. So what about the other places we went to? So what did I grab from Peter's Barn? 
Let me tell you, first of all, the lady who owned the place was an absolute, absolute dream. Her 90 year old father started this up and I guess it was just kind of like a hoarder's palace. She has spent a lot of time organizing and displaying the pieces and doing the best she can. And even she walks around with gloves on. So she was lovely enough to let us film. We told her we would totally be back and we wanted to feature her on our YouTube channel so that people knew she was around because when you look up the store online, it says it's closed. So she was a nice find. And I actually went there for another store that was closed. So what did I get in there in Jeffersonville in Peter's barn? Because I actually got a few things that weren't in the barn. They had a yard sale that was going on outside this other place. Save the dam. And I'll show you that later. But I picked up for me to add to the inherited Santa collection that I have these world Santas. Now this guy is Italy. Is the Italiano Santa Claus. I don't think that sounded Italian. I tried. Sorry, Grandma. So I got him, and then I got the Switzerland Santa. I like him. He's smoking a pipe. I like that a lot. So he was really cute. And I got the Mexico, Viva la Mexico one as well. I have a smaller Mexico Santa, and I love that he's riding a donkey. I think that is great. So those three are staying with me. They are. This was probably my, I don't know if it was my favorite find or my second favorite find. It was one of my top, it was definitely my top two for the day. And I will show you why. This is a Goodwoods, and it says it right here on the trivet, Goodwood, Spice of Light serving tray. Now I'm going to give you a nice close look at this. It is in absolute pristine condition. The rubber on the bottom of the stoppers, all four are still there. It even has the little hanger and the made in Japan sticker. Still Japan, right? Yeah, sticker still on it. Just make sure it didn't say Taiwan. It is in fantastic condition. And I grabbed this because we used to have one just like it. Only ours was the one that had like a U. Now, I looked these up online. I cannot find this exact one. I don't know why, but it's not there. So, this is just a walk down memory lane, nostalgia, and with the fall serving season or holiday cooking season coming up, this was a must have. A must, must, must have. The other thing I found in Peter's Barn that got me really, really excited was this cute guy. Look at this little baby pixie all in white. Now, the only issue he has is the cold paint on his feet has started to come off, but his face is in, or her face, their face, is in excellent shape with all the paint and those eyebrows and just that sweet little face. Oh, the planter itself is in really great condition. The bottom is in great condition. There are no chips. There are no cracks. He is gorgeous, gorgeous. This is another great piece that's going to last all the way through the winter because of his dad's. I mean, he's like a little New Year elf with his white and gold. I just, oh, I loved him. He's going to be hard to give up. I'm not going to lie. He's going to be a little tricky. The other piece that picked up, and this was just because I got a chuckle out of it, was the TWA, the winning action. Newark to Las Vegas daily nonstop flights. I think they stopped. Now, the box is old, and it's more an aged thing, and I really think this deck was only opened once while they were on the flight for a few seconds because the cards are in fantastic shape, like they've never, ever, ever been used. I think that was it that I was going to show you from Peter's Barn. Yeah. yeah. I do have to go back, though. I have to go back and spend a little more time digging. The Christmas holiday room was insane. It really was. Um, the upstairs of that, I have to look a little closer because like I said, there's still pieces of furniture I, I'm looking for, but whew, I was having a hard time breathing in there that day because it was a little, my asthma was really kicking up a little bit. So also in Jeffersonville, there was that little yard sale I was telling you about. And I picked up two pieces. One, I'm going to show you this. 
This is a mid-century modern made and signed bud vase with the like atomic points. And almost like if you look at it, you go, I see a cat. It's a vase. I see a cat. That's what John keeps telling me. He sees a cat. And I can see it. I get it. Now this is signed. There we go. Vigil. 1960. What I have found out about Vigil is there is a group of Vigils who are in, I believe it's New Mexico, they are Native American potters or indigenous people potters or tribal people potters. I cannot say that this belongs to them. The signature on the bottom is similar to some of the other pieces I have seen. Now they do have a few pieces that have a more of a solid glaze as opposed to um, representation of the Pueblos people. And I think I'm saying that right. I think it is the Pueblos people. If I am wrong, I'm sorry. But I'm going to pop this up on eBay and we're going to see where this baby goes because it's not very big. It's about that big. It's not very big, but I just fell in love with the glaze and the coloring and just for fall, that orange, that creamy pumpkin orange is just absolutely everything. Now, at the same time, I found this. This is a candle. It is a black cat Siamese candle who has really seen some better days. She's She's got a little... Well, she's got a lot of age. She got a little wrinkles. It's almost like she's a hairless cat. This poor baby has definitely, definitely, and we should link it to the face, <laughs> been out there, gotten into some cat fights, and has come out the other side still alive, still whole, and still in one piece. Like, look at the face. <laughs> now, in really good condition, she would she would fetch a nice little penny, but she's a foot tall this is ludicrous look at how big this is. this is a foot tall at least my head's not that big but she is beautiful she is gorgeous i don't i don't know if i'm gonna put her up for sale i don't know she might just sit with my halloween decor in my big window looking all messed up and i'll be okay with that yeah all right so that was it from Jeffersonville. Now on the way back, we passed by and uh, it slammed on the brakes an estate sale. Turns out it was a woman selling off her aunt's antique collection. I guess she had an antique store and the woman just didn't know what to do with the stuff and had everything out and still had the prices from the antique store on them. And she said, the prices that are on there, that's not what we're, we're not going to do that. Okay. Now, hold that thought. I have been looking for an inkwell. I'm gonna keep this. I'm gonna keep this baby for now. For an inkwell to have on my desk, and this is the one that I picked up. So there's the pen holder right there. Hold it this way, because I don't want the glass to come out. So it's just a. It kind of reminds me of like a Scrooge from Dickens kind of inkwell. It is a form of metal. But it is not like it's heavy, but it's not super heavy. So it's not like a real heavy wrought iron because I have a wrought iron trivet and it weighs more than this. So this was mine. I'm going to keep that. It's sitting on my desk over here looking all cute and pretty. The only other piece I picked up from her was this. A scotch tin tape holder. Still in. I mean, the condition that this is in is just ridiculous now it does have from a previous sticker that was on there there's a little bit of like goo and that actually might have been the original um price gun sticker uh the insides are super clean and for a pre-1960s piece it is in really great shape so that will be coming to a live sale near you soon now, those were the all last two pieces. Now, the last piece at that huge yard sale, I picked up one, th one thing at that huge yard sale. And when I watched back after editing the video, I went, I should have gotten that and that and that and that. Needless to say, they will be back. They said, I think they said they were coming back Labor Day weekend, and I'm hoping they get more stuff. Uh, I guess he owns that 
plot of land that they set that up because it was we went to another flea market and this yard sale kicked that other flea market's butt so i did pick up i did get them the hen and rooster poker bridge card snack plates now these are 22 karat gold the uh suit markers that's not right the suits are in 24, 22 karat gold, not 24. And it is lined, trimmed in the same 22 karat gold. And they are a set of five. Now, this is what's weird about these. They have a double stamp on the back. They say Eastern China Company. But they also say Padden City. They're double stamped. So, I don't know. It's almost like Padden City Pottery made them and then Eastern China Company came along and put the gold on it. It's kind of what I'm thinking. And they're all in varying shapes of condition. Like the suit, gold suits are better here than they are on this plate. I just thought that they were, and they did clean up just fine. They just used a little bit of Dove. Dove? Dawn. They did clean up really nice. They are nice seven inch size plates. And I thought they were adorable because where I'm at, I still have every day a group of little old ladies who go down to the pool to play bridge or canasta or whatever it is they play. There used to be a group of men who went down there and played poker. And you would hear the women yelling at the men to shut up and the men yelling at the women to shut up. It's kind of died down a little bit, but as everything is. So that's it. That is it. That is everything I wanted to show you. Of course, I got to hold a little back and, you know, make you wonder what else I got. So please be sure to give up that thumbs up, like, share, and subscribe. We really need it as we're a burgeoning, beginning new channel. By the time this comes up, I will have done these live sales. I have two live sales coming up. So I'm really anxious and super excited at the same time and hoping to get that ramped up. And until next time... Stay swanky and stay classy.